Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Ronnie from A Teacher's Wonderland and I am your host. Your ghost host. Ha <laughs> ha Do you get it? It's from Haunted Mansion. No, that's okay if you didn't get it. Um, so welcome. I am going to be your web leader for today. Please make sure that you like A little bell to no be notified every time we post a new video. This video is a little different than the other ones because this one is going to be a straight up workshop. Okay, so you're probably gonna have to do a couple pauses here, and that's totally fine. First thing you need to know is you need to have lots of post it notes, probably a pencil, and I would highly recommend that you have a list of your students' names along with. Um, either the skills that they're struggling with or you could have their math levels if they have like a state test and then I would just keep it super simple um, like if one of my students was Barry I would give him a he would be a four he got a four on the state test I would literally just do it like that Barry four okay um, if you really want to get detailed you can do your fours on this post-it note, all of your threes on another post-it note, all of your twos on another note, and just keep them. You go ahead and pause this video of your students' names and make sure you have their level because today we are going to group by level um, for your math. You're going to also group by skills slash strategies that they might not be successful with. Go ahead and pause here. Did you pause back? I hope so. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm going to group my students using this, okay? This has not been released yet, but if you follow me on Instagram under a teacher's wonderland, you'll get this soon. Okay. Um, so let's group our students based off of their levels. Uh, I personally like to take all of my students. I'll even put them on the back here because I'm going to write this like 10 times. And I'm going to group them by their levels. Now, it could be the same. In other states, it might not be. We have, for our state testing, we have one through five, which to me is like a low, low medium, high medium, high. So it looks like this. Okay. I will not actually group my students. Um, on this one based off of skill, I'm going to specifically group them based off of if they are low, low, medium, and high. And I'm gonna look at my list and I'm gonna say, okay, I have 20 kids. I'm just gonna keep it super simple and I'm going to make it easy for myself. Um, I know it's not realistic, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna put my low kids, so kids that got ones and twos in my low pile if they're a high two, low three, they're gonna go on low medium. If they're a high three, low four, they're gonna be high, uh, yeah, high medium. And if they're a five, they're gonna be just in the high group. So let's go ahead and sort. So again, let's start with our ones and our twos. Okay, so if they are a one or a two, or they are considered on the lower side, let's put them in our low group or our group one. Okay, you can pause the video here and write it. So what I did, I don't have real students, so I just made up names, first name that popped in. And I have seven kids here that are one. And I put this one here, Shamar Moore, if you know that after. I put him as a low two, um, just because I knew he could be swayed either way. Um, there are moments where he's real and he's not. So I just said, you know what, I'm gonna put him as now what I want you to do is I want you to go through your twos 
and maybe they're not necessarily like super high, but they're also not super low. So I want you to put them in your low mediums. Go ahead and pause. Okay, so for my low mediums, what I did was I decided to just put their numbers here. And I noticed that Elliot was also a three, but I also have Shamar down here who's a two. So I could possibly combine. Now I'm gonna go to my threes and my fours and my fives. I'm gonna just put my fives in straight in because that's going to be super helpful just to get the fives in. The ones that, if I don't see them today, it's not gonna hurt them. Does that make sense? Um, those are the ones I'm going to pop into that high, high, high group, that H group. So go ahead and pause and put that there. Now we're gonna skip right to the high, to the high medium. Okay, so I put um, my high kids that if I don't see them today, I'll be okay. That's where they are, okay? And now I'm gonna take the remaining students that I have, which might only be a few, and I'm gonna put them in the high medium because now I've already broken it down and now I can see exactly who needs to go where. So pause the video to do your last high medium. Okay, so as you can see, my groups are kind of heavy. Like especially my low group, right? I've got seven in there. And then my low mediums, it's also kind of heavy. But if I have four groups and 20 students, I probably should have about five per group. That's what would be ideal. Now, of course, it's not gonna always be perfect number like this, but you can see, and I purposely did this, that there are discrepancies and we don't have enough. Now my high group here, there's five. I can lock them in. Those five are great. So I'm gonna actually circle these five and say they're good because I have five. But now I'm gonna look at my other three. That means that on my, on my high medium group, ooh, where'd it go? There we go, right here. This group right here has spots for three more. So what am I gonna do? Well, first thing is I see Elliot can probably get popped over. So I'm actually gonna cross off Elliot's name and put him there. So now I have added. Okay, but I also see that now my two, my group two is going to be down a four. Hmm. But you know, that's not gonna work I need to make sure that I get some of my twos to move them higher. I wanna put them with some of my high mediums, my group three. So I'm actually going to take two kids that I think are really high that could possibly be moved two or three and I'm gonna move them from group two to group three. I think that Drew, you know, Drew Barrymore, duh, would be fantastic in the three group. I also think that Benji you know, Cameron Diaz's husband is going to be, maybe it's the other one, whatever. Benji is going to be great in the high medium. And that means I can probably close those gaps and he can hear what the high medium group sounds like and I can get him higher. I'm going to move him. Okay. Here's my groups right now. So now this group is good. This group is good. I'm going to lock those in as well. When I put a box around him, I locked it in along with crossing it out. But now how many do I need here? Oh gosh, I only have two. So that means I need three to pop over. So, hey, look, I saw, I remember that Shamar was fantastic and he was really close to getting that too. I'm gonna move him over to that level two. I'm gonna go Shamar, he's moving over to a two. So that gives me two more people that I can move over. Janisha was great in the last session that I had with her. I'm gonna move her over and I'm also going to move Leo over. So that puts me, let's count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Notice this is a scratch pad, right? I'm not going crazy and trying to make it all nice right now. I'm literally just trying to fill in the blanks. Now I could use this to for my students and I could say, okay, um, this kid should go here and he, and I can have all my post-it notes and move them up. I don't know about you guys though, but post-it notes sometimes, too many of them drive me crazy. So if you didn't use post-it notes and you went like me on this, cool, 
fine. Now we need to formalize it, okay? Now we need to take this and say, hey, this kid was really good and we're gonna put these in our groups. So we're gonna get out our handy dandy, whatever we use. This is just my teacher tracker. And I'm literally just going to write down their names somewhere that they can see. I will also make sure that I put this on, if I have anchor chart, I will put it on there. If I use, um, what are those, not marker boards, projector. I used to use projector for my small groups. If you have the projector, I'm gonna update these right now. And I'm also going to make sure that my kids are aware of their group. And a lot of times what I'll do, um, and I haven't seen it in a while, but Target had those little clear, um, what are they called? Like little clear, like slip things. And I would actually print the group names and who's in their group on um, maybe a sticky note or a little piece of paper. And I would have reading and math groups. And that way they knew exactly who they can go to in those groups. But you also want to make sure that you have a place for your students. So <laughs> when one student doesn't show up to your group, you're not going, who am I missing? Who's missing? Oh, uh, I think I'm missing Benji. Benji, where are you? You don't have to anymore. You don't have to think about who you're missing. You could do your daily attendance because we had to do attendance in small group. Did you guys have to do that? We had to mark who came in. I have my list here and I can just go, all right, today's day one. Andrew, are you here? Good. Edward, good. Elliot, good. Drew, here. Benji, here. Boom. Check marks. Five days. And there's my entire week overview. And now I have my week. And I can actually just mark it up. Tomorrow's Tuesday. All right. Andrew, good. Edward, good. Elliot, good. Drew, Drew, we need you over here. Benji, good. And as soon as, as, soon as Drew Barrymore sat her butt down, she gets that check mark, and we are good. Okay, that's one way to organize your group. Let's do another way. Okay, I'm going to tell you this, <laughs> but I tell you this with caution. If you decide to do it this way, that's totally fine. Totally fine. But keep in mind that this way may cause stress. This way may cause frustration. Okay. I'm going to tell you to teach chart a piece of paper. I don't method. I say this for like the end of a unit. What are your four to six standards that you're doing per unit? Okay, if you have four standards, usually for me it was like always about four standards. Um, I would write each standard, boom, 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 boom. So I'm gonna make them up. Value, I'm gonna go multiplying with area model. I'm gonna go um, multiplying with partial products oops and then i'm just gonna go standard multiplication even though down here in florida that's actually not a standard believe it or not okay um i want you to look at your unit that you have that you either just finished or you're coming up to whatever one it doesn't matter um and i want you to teach her it and your four main standards or whatever however many standards you have i want you to teach her like this Okay, pause this video right here so that you can go ahead and, and this as well and go. Okay, you have your standards. Now, if you do pounds and X's, like standard-based grading, that's what it's called. If you do standard-based grading, if you don't, you might have to do a little bit of configuration. We are going to take our students that we know struggle with a specific standard, okay? And we are going to write them down. Do not write everybody's name down unless the entire class bombed it. That means that we need to go back and reteach the entire class, not just one student, the entire class. So let's say, um, you know, you have your class that needs to learn how to do place value again, okay? Um, I'm going to look at my standards and say, okay, I had... Here's my last test. I had nine kids that struggled with 
place value. I'm going to take those nine kids and I'm going to write them down. I mean, for me right now, I'm just kind of writing them. So if you want to pause right now and write down that one specific standard, go for it. Or you can write with me as I write them down. I wrote Drew in this one too. I don't know if you guys are aware. I'm a very, very big Drew Barrymore fan. So if I have workshops, my kids, every kid will be Drew. True story. So I literally went through, found my kids that struggled with place value and wrote down the place value score. I wrote, wrote these kids are the ones that need to be retaught because they, which means that they did not pass their standard. All I'm doing is I'm writing them down. The rest of your standard to come up with needs to go. Now remember, you can have repeats on this because maybe Drew is really bad and she was really bad at place value and area model and I'm going to pull her and that's totally fine. I might even have some of my kids that are like super, super high. I might not even have any of my kids that are super low. Oh, did you guys see that? It just went flying out of my hands. It's totally fine how this works. And you might have multiples. And that's okay. It's okay. Okay, so I have, and if you are still working, you can pause this video and totally do this. Here are my groups. My four groups allow me to organize them based off of their skill, but notice how some of them are repeated. Ooh, where's the camera? There we go. Okay, like Jake and Jake. Jake and Jake are still repeated. He repeated twice because he was struggled with partial products plus I have Drew and Drew and two of them. That's I have Jessica up there and I have Jessica down here. Again, that's fine. There's only one of you, so you're only going to be teaching this one at a time. Now, you could do this once you have, you can do this in multiple ways. Um, one, you can do this as a reteach review day. Two, you could use this as a, um, a day where instead of pulling small groups to review the current skill, here's a group you're pulling. And that's your week activity. And that's fine too. You could even pull them during and said, you nine, I want you going and working on place value because you did not understand this and I want you to go practice. That's fine. Remember, this is your classroom. Do what you want. You are the teacher, you are in charge. You just might need to turn in those names to your, your, your principal. Hopefully this helped you organize your math groups. And I hope this workshop was super helpful. And I hope that you exactly work math groups. Because sometimes just hearing an outsider might just be that cherry on top. Have fun creating your groups.